In May 1st, 1939, this is the first year we've seen Batman land inside the comic books. Now, as soon as Bruce stated in the comics, we've seen after the death of his parents, he becomes a master scientist and trains to physical perfection. The thing is, is that there was never ever really a clear reason on how Batman became this tough other than just training. But there has been hints in the past, such as Batman issue 452 and Secret Origins of the World's Greatest Superheroes. See, when you take a look inside the book Secret Origins of the World's Greatest Superheroes, you see Batman going on an adventure after the death of his parents. Traveling to different parts of the world, learning new things, Batman would eventually meet Master Kirigi and train with him for months on end, in which Kirigi notices that Batman's training physique is abnormal as if some great violence has marked him to allow him to do what he's doing which couldn't have been closer to the truth. You see, in Batman issue 452, there was a time in the 1700s where a group of people summoned a demon called the Barbathos. They did this using an ancient ritual so they can capture the demon. Only issue is, is that they had to sacrifice somebody for the control spell to even work. This would fail though because the demon would reveal himself and scare the villagers out the temple. After this, they would trap Barbathos inside the building and completely abandon it by never returning to it again. And this move alone would chain a lot of things because this temple slash area would eventually become what we know as today, Gotham City. Now they imply much more as later on the Riddler finds out about this concept and goes back to that very temple to redo the sacrifice. Though just as before, it scares off the Riddler, but this time it explains to Batman that he's pretty much Gotham. The dark cities are a dark reflection of himself, and he pretty much found Bruce Wayne and molded him into Batman so he can eventually free him from being trapped under the building back in the 1700s, which is probably why Gotham is built in the same exact area. But the story of Batman's Mark and Barbados go much deeper. You see, in 2017, we get a whole bunch of new information on the creature and his name gets changed to Barbados. Now it's revealed the dragon is a great ordeal with the cosmic hierarchy in the DC universe which is oddly how Batman got involved. You see when the multiverse was being made with it was other ideas created to help it function. One of those many things would be the dark realm which exists right beneath the multiverse where a guy identified as the world forger would work at because in the dark resides the world forge. Now the forge is a huge pit where every universe is sprung from. I'm talking the infinite universes that make up the regular DC multiverse and much more, and the Forger creates these worlds using that pit. But the reason why Barbados connects to all this is because the method used to create these worlds makes it where a being like him is needed. Basically the Forger would hammer out universes from the hopes and fears of all living things, which those hopes and fears would spark possibilities and he would hammer every single one of them into a universe. The most stable universes would rise up to the RA, which is just another term for the regular DC multiverse, but if it's not stable enough and too destructive, that's when Barbados will come in, as the Forger created the creature to be his pet and eat any evil universe that he ever makes. Now, for a while, Barbados listened. The dragon fulfilled his function and did what he was meant to do, which aided the creation of the multiverse until he didn't. Essentially, he was tired of being chained to this one purpose, so he decided to rebel. The dragon would kill his creator, the Forger, and all the infinite evil universes he was meant to destroy, he kept them alive and made him his army, which is where Batman comes in. See, Barbados wanted to take over the multiverse, but he couldn't really do that because he was in the dark, which is right beneath it. So he thought of the idea of molding something into his gateway to the light. This idea appeared way back in Final Crisis when Darkseid shot Batman with his Omega Beams and sent him all the way back in the past. It's also good to note that the explanation's a bit paradoxical, so bear with me. Now, since the dawn of mankind, there was three main tribes, until one significant one came in and changed the course of history. This would happen in the final moments of Final Crisis, where Batman was sent to the past and he would put his bat mark on a piece of stone. From then on, he would fight other tribes like Vandal Savages to stay alive, and in doing so, he would inspire many other people to follow him. Now the reason why this all connects to Barbados is perfectly explained in the Dark Knight's metal tie in Batman Lost. In this comic, Barbados is revealing to Bruce the true purpose of his existence and what he has to do with him, and most importantly, the start of Batman, the beginning of his story. Which Bruce denies this by saying, that's not right, I know the beginning of my story, a reference to the death of Batman's parents in the alleyway. Now Batman's not technically wrong on this, but not entirely right either. See, as explained before, when Bruce released his symbol 
in the past and inspired an entire bat tribe. And even though he didn't mean to do this, this group would have a long ongoing war with the tribe of birds. A war that was spanned through human history, a war between birds and bats, and most importantly, a war that would seek the attention of Barbados. Barbados would see Bruce inspire all these men while swearing his symbol, the bats. So the dragon would try to use Batman's tribe to bring himself into the multiverse for the first time, which that would fail. After this, he realizes his ultimate vessel, the one he saw at the beginning, and the one he would mark as his gateway to the multiverse, Batman. Now at this point, Barbados marks Bruce Wayne as Batman, influencing his entire life, creating obstacles for him to become who he eventually becomes. That's why in Secret Origins of the World's Greatest Superheroes, the comic I talked about earlier where it said Batman was marked by a great violence, it's shown what inspired Bruce to become the Dark Knight was a bat breaking inside his mansion. Which 30 years later in Batman Lost, what do you know, it's directly revealed that Barbados was that very bat that broke in and inspired Bruce. Now this whole idea of Batman's beginning happening when he went into the past was very nonsensical to the Dark Knight, claiming that's all wrong and that this is another story entirely. But the truth is, the two stories are one. What I mean by this is that the story of Bruce's parents dying and seeing the bats, and the story of Bruce being sent to the past and inspiring a whole new bat tribe are both contingent on each other. Without Bruce seeing that bat and becoming the Dark Knight, Batman would have never went in the past. And without him going in the past, he would have never seen the bat in the first place because that's what started it all. So it's two separate stories connected as one and behind it all is the bat god Barbados. And that's why in Dark Days the casting, they directly call him Batman's true father. But making Bruce Wayne Batman isn't the only thing he's done to the Dark Knight. Everything that happened in the 1700s was all part of Barbados' plan. He even made Gotham the way it is by marking it all for the sake of the Cape Crusader. But the dragon's plan wouldn't be completely finalized until the year 2017 with Dark Knight's medal. Essentially, Batman figures out what's going on with his existence and attempts to hide himself from society. Now here goes the following status of Barbados' final plan. Batman his entire life up until this point has been infected with four impossible medals. The first one would be Electrum, which was put into his body when he faced off with the Court of Owls and drank from their pool. The second one would be Dionysium, which is what he used to bring himself back to life after facing with the Joker. The third one would be Prometheum, a metal he used to make himself Batman again after bringing himself back to life. And the fourth one would be Inth Metal, which he exposed himself to while attempting to see Barbados in the dark. Now the issue here is that if Batman's infected with the fifth metal, then the gate is open. Barbados can enter the universe, which is why Bruce is hiding. Now Batman was found by the Court of Owls, whom were revealed betrayed descendants of the Bird Tribe, who have been working with Barbados their entire life to eventually make Batman the gateway. And it would work, they would splash Batman with the final metal, Batmanium, allowing Barbados Barbados to access the multiverse. Now in summary, this would lead to a gigantic crisis event dominated by Barbados and his evil Batman minions. Like we literally see the Bat God shaking the multiverse with just a scream alone. But this would all end after Batman and Superman get a hold of the strongest metal in the DC universe and defeat Barbados with it. Although the damage caused by Bruce by allowing Barbados into his world wouldn't stop there as one of his minions, the Batman who laughs, would ascend even beyond his boss after outsmarting Barbados and basically the entire DC cosmic hierarchy for that matter. Now I don't want to stay too long on the Batman who laughs as he's not entirely relevant to the video, but essentially one of the many things that Barbados told Batman was that he was meant to be something like the Batman who laughs if it weren't for all the configurations that he did to his life. Now back to point, the Batman who laughs would steal the powers of Dr. Manhattan and merge himself with every single Batman across the dark multiverse and become a hundred times more powerful than Barbados ever has been. And although the one who laughs and Barbados would both eventually be defeated, it wouldn't change the fact that even in current comics, the dragon is still messing with Batman's life. Like I explained earlier, Barbados would mark Bruce as the Bat, and in newer comics, it seems to expand on this concept. Now this would take place in the current Detective Comics run, where it begins with Batman doing the casual job of facing off robbers. But but after an eventual scandal with an unknown monster, Bruce would find a music box that would change a whole lot of things. Now after obtaining the music box, Bruce would take it to Cardeen, an Arkham Asylum inmate that's a clear expert in music. Now the reason why Batman went to Cardeen in the Arkham Asylum was because the box plays a melody that's unheard and unknown for centuries. He describes the tune as the devil's interval, but the real music is in the harmonics well below audible frequencies. 
Now this would result in the music being capable of releasing something that's being held back by someone. And this would be important because the first time Batman heard this tune, his inner piece of Barbados that he's been holding back starts to release itself. And this would play a factor later on in the comics because every time Batman gets in a garbage situation, the demon pushes him more to use that inner strength that he's holding back. And now I don't want to go too deep into the plot as it doesn't hold much relevance on what I want to talk about directly, but the basic idea is Batman got beat up pretty bad. And with little to no power left, he has no other option than to embrace the hell back strength Barbados marked him with. This would allow him to get much stronger, aiding him in defeating his enemy, and would also conclude this video on Batman's history with the mark of Barbados.